and I'm the executive director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Welcome to KubeCon Cloud Native Con, North America. <laughs> Woo! Happening in Los Angeles. Woohoo! It was touch and go for a minute. I was like, I want to be able to say the words Los Angeles on a real stage. And here it is. It's happening. All of you who've made it here in person, you are the hardcore crew. <laughs> You're here. There were so many challenges, so many considerations, and yet you showed up. This is what I mean when I say our resilience is realized. This is what I mean when I say this community is a part of our identity. For those of you who are watching from a computer screen somewhere around the world, you did it too. There were so many considerations, personal, geographic, health, that made you choose the things you need to. But yet, here you are, listening to me, speaking right now. So kudos to you too. Because of you, we are experiencing a first. The very first KubeCon Cloud Native Con hybrid. As we think of all these great things, we need to know they would not happen without the unsung heroes. The LF events team led by Vanessa has jumped through obstacle courses the size of Olympics to get us to this point. We're living in a world of shortage economy, shortage of labor, shortage of supplies, badges gone missing, anything that you can imagine that could possibly go wrong, probably did. And yet, here we are. They made it happen for us. Another example of what I mean when I say resilience realized. The sponsors, too, really showed up in big numbers to make this happen for us. They enabled us all to meet. And there's so many of them. I actually only have space for diamond, platinum, end user, and diversity. You know, research by David Sally in the 90s tells us that cooperation and collaboration increases by 45% by just people meeting in person, having face-to-face -face interactions. And for enabling all of that, LF Events and sponsors, we heart you. You're the best. Yes, let's do it. All right. Team Cloud Native, we are so strong. Our community is so powerful. And I believe that the power of us is the power of our culture. It's because we bring our whole selves to this ecosystem and we're make, able to make it our own. We bring whimsy and joy to the hard work and challenges that we often face in our big work together. You know, they say often that art Imitate, imitates life. And I actually think that's what's happening here too. Do you folks know Fippy and Friends? <laughs> well, Fippy is this adorable PHP application and she is looking to modernize. She and her friends took this journey to the land of cloud native and have had so much fun along the way. Actually, Karen Chu and Matt Butcher, two of the creators of Fippy in the early days, they're here somewhere today. And this is an example of them bringing their whimsy, their joy to the whole community and making this culture their own. I have to tell you, Fippy has made two new friends. Please meet Linky, the gender neutral blue lobster by the Linkerd project, and Hazel, the hedgehog by Helm. If you think this is as cute as I do, well, go to the book reading and signing happening on Thursday by the Cartographos group. They wrote the latest storybook. You know, just as Fippy is making new friends and having such a great time, Team Cloud Native is also growing. The us has been evolving since I joined this community in 2015, really. We started off as these dreamers and stargazers and we built this paradigm of computing that has made every company a technology company today. Over time, 
We sparked the interest of developers around the world, and they used us to build myriad applications that touch human lives around the globe. Time flew quickly for us. In fact, in 2019, we had 44 projects, some 81,000 contributors, and 164 countries represented. Pretty good stuff. By May of 2021, which was the previous KubeCon uh, EU that just happened, we were at 96 projects, over 123,000 contributors, representing 177 countries. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, I, I saw a few claps, good, good. But get this, get this. Today, oh, just in six months, we are at 144 projects, over 137,000 plus contributors representing 186 countries. Yes, that's clap worthy. <laughs> yep, the upstarts and the dreamers have been joined by the pragmatists and operators who run the world. And nowhere was this more apparent than when last month I was in Europe and I took a trip. I had two interesting experiences. First was met the in-laws to be for the first time. <laughs> and second, I met with end user and telco companies. So I met with Audi, Daimler, Spotify, Deutsche Telekom, all very different companies. But they all had one thing in common. They had large scaled out cloud native teams in-house that created the developer experience for their entire developer workforce to utilize cloud native. This is leaps and bounds far ahead than anything I'd seen before. I've been around this community since 2015 talking to end users, and this is just a new era. What these folks need now is our welcome, our kudos, a place in the community that they so much deserve. Speaking of welcome and kudos, I would like to announce that American Express is joining us as a gold member in CNCF. Their leadership is committed to nurturing and hiring the best and most diverse talent to, to support the next generation of cloud native. That's right, the next generation. Their SVP and head of infrastructure, Evan Katsovios, sorry, Evan, <laughs> says cloud native technologies help them deliver the always on experience that their customers expect and deserve. And joining CNCF was a natural extension of their commitment to cloud native. To that I say, thank you and welcome to the community. Woohoo! Another thing we've been doing is to bring in more people into the fold is helping telcos define cloud native network functions. AT&T appreciates our efforts and is joining us as a platinum member to support them. And now, I'd like to invite Dorota Blatt, our board member from AT&T, to share the company's perspective in her own words. It's great to be officially part of this fantastic community. We at AT&T have been on a journey to virtualize, containerize, and software enable our network for several years now. And I'm very proud to say that when we built our 5G core network, it was designed to be cloud native from the ground up. And now as we turn to look at scale and enabling future network use cases, we see that key to that success and future adaption really lies in tools associated with lifecycle management. Lifecycle management for network functions as well as cloud layers. And I'm heartened to see that that's exactly what the CNF Working Group is focusing on right now in a cloud native way. So let me leave you with the last message, and that is that CNCF community is the perfect place for us all to collaborate. And we at AT&T, the network engineers at AT&T, are very happy to be part of that journey. Thank you. Woohoo! Go to Rhoda! You know, the awesome thing about companies such as Amex and AT&T joining us is that it shows the increasing diversity and ubiquity of Team Cloud Native. You know, we've gone from this highly specialized, very technical group of people focusing on web scale problems 
to solving all scale problems around the world. All kinds of companies, small, large, extra large, everyone's here. And a key point is that these new companies are very different from the OGs. They are different from the folks who started Team Cloud Native. And that is an amazing thing. It shows our ranks are growing and more and more people are joining us every day. This growth has, of course, been also been fueled by COVID. All of us have experienced a lot of challenges, pain, loss in the last almost two years at this point. And COVID has completely upended our lives. Because of that, companies too have had to scramble or sail to digitizing their offerings and supporting all of us. I looked at some research to check my anecdotal experiences, and I looked at work by McKinsey and Company. By the way, my sister works there. Those people work really hard. So, looking at this information from the hardest working company in the world, we find that across business areas, fully digitized products and services have grown to 60% in the pandemic, up from 40. Very critically, executives around the world now see technology as an area of investment. It is no longer a cost center. These, by the way, are the pragmatists and operators I talked about before who are joining us. They're coming en masse. And these changes are here to stay. They are expected to way outlast the pandemic and are forming the new normal. This seems to explain to me the rapid increase in numbers we've seen even from just last May. Of course, as the types of companies changes, as more types of uh, organizations join us, the type of people joining us is also changing. Who we are is changing. We started with the wizards of the systems engineering world, and today we have all kinds of contributions. We have doc writers, application developers, security professionals, event planners, all, and of course, the system folks. And I'll, I'll be the first to admit, this change can sometimes feel uncomfortable. But I'm here to tell you that this is actually our golden opportunity. This is our chance to shine the light on our beautiful culture, on our ethos, and bring people in and change how the world operates. From CNCF's side, one effort we're making to bring in more people and support the ecosystem with brand new talent is the Kubernetes and Cloud Native Associate Certification. We're announcing it today, and it's going to be available in GA by end of the year. This is an amazing certification for anybody who's brand new to Cloud Native, and they will learn by participating. They will learn about the fundamentals of Kubernetes, about the Cloud Native landscape, our projects. They even learn how to deploy an application using kubectl commands. So if you have ever dreamed of your entire team singing the tune of Cloud Native, moving in lockstep, understanding this culture, regardless of their job function or role, well, this exams the move. Certs like KCNA, as we call the Kubernetes and Cloud Native Associate, bring in more people to our ranks. And as we change and evolve, the power of us will be the power of the culture we have created. You know, I look at the Kubernetes values and they tell me so much. Ultimately, what I hear is the collective can create for the greater good and achieve results far greater in impact than any a single entity could achieve. It is this ethos in which we have formed a community and it is what we all believe together. And I think that is why I think cloud native people are cloud native first and then insert company name, whether it's Google, Spotify, AT&T, Series A startup, whatever. And I think it's because we're proud of who we are. Actually, I think I should just ask you, tell me, do you feel proud to be part of Team Cloud Native? Yeah? Say yes. Do you feel proud to be part of Team Cloud Native? I want to hear a big yes. yes. Woo! Great job. That's right. Me too. We're all in this together. And you know why? Because I think 
the key tenet of this ecosystem, where the collective supersedes and outperforms the individual, is the principle of paying it forward. I mean, just look around you. There are so many people here, all of them doing their bit for this community. There's Alison Doudney, who showed up with such a complicated itinerary, but she somehow made it here. There's Paris Pittman, who beats the drum for Kubernetes sustainability. There's Sarah Novotny, who is always available to give guidance and support. You just need to call her. There's Kat Cosgrove, being super cool on Cloud Native TV. And then there's so many others. There's also folks online today. There's Matthias Anberg, who's been sharing his schedule and helping others pick talks. There's Dims, who creates Zoom rooms and Slack channels to make people have a great time. No one told these people they have to do this. They're doing this to create the environment they want to be a part of. They're paying it forward and creating a joyful ecosystem. You know, companies in this ecosystem, with a little nudge from CNCF, also do the right thing support projects and help each other and build together. In particular, I would like to call out the contributions by Equinix Metal, Google, AWS, and GitHub in supporting our projects with meaningful infrastructure donations so that they can run efficiently every day. And today, to help others do the same, we're announcing the Cloud Native Credits Program. This is every company's opportunity to support CNCF projects by donating infrastructure to, uh, to them to use as they need. So if you're interested, go to cncf.io slash credits and start the conversation with us. You know, this program, is, it was so heartening to get it going because in the very beginning, I talked to folks and Cox Communications, for example, is a great company that was just like, Oh, this is happening, we're in. And they're coming in to support us with edge credits in their edge lab. And um, you can utilize them whenever you want. Next time in Valencia, I'll be sharing others who are joining in and share the great stories. As all this is happening, as we're building this world paradigm of cooperation and creation, there are threats to our resilience. There are threats to our power. As cloud native go grows and software's impact on humanity grows, the security question is the big one. Software today is not a place where people feel safe and secure. We in the Kubernetes ecosystem have created a security first mindset with tag security, regular audits every year for graduated projects and many things. And building upon those best practices, the Linux Foundation is upping the ante and has a brand new story to tell. I'd like to invite my colleague, Brian Bellendorf, from the Open Source Software Security Foundation to come and tell us what's happening. Hey, Brian. Thanks, Priyanka. No. Thanks. Hey, it's, it's so great to be here. I'm so excited to, to be talking to you all today about what we'll be doing uh, now in this next stage of the evolution of a project that's been at the Linux Foundation for the last year and is now about to make a major pivot in its operations. Uh, I'm Brian Bellendorf. I am now the general manager for the Open Source Security Foundation. Uh, I, uh, and, and it's, it's, yeah, cool. uh, it's, it's actually really exciting. But let me start with kind of the dark place we're in right now to really uh, play on the theme of resiliency. All of you, I'm sure, are familiar with what you might, what we call the software supply chain, right? The sequence of events that goes from, you know, the first line of code to building it and depending upon other packages as you build it, to shipping it out through various channels to actually get it to the end user. And we know uh, that there are so many points in that chain where we kind of take things for granted. We take for granted a lot of the infrastructure we build upon. Uh, we take for granted a lot of those dependencies we pull in, that, that weird uh, offhand uh, repo that's a fork of a fork of a fork, right? That we wake up one day and discover perhaps somebody has taken down, or perhaps somebody is replaced with a uh, Bitcoin miner, or somebody is replaced uh, surreptitiously in a thing that leads us to have to scramble. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, so many of you, I'm sure, have been affected by the breaches that have happened in the last year. Supply chain attacks on the software supply chain have increased by almost an order of magnitude in any reasonably objective way to measure it. Uh, and I'm sure all of you have been affected as well. 
So over the last year, a community has come together at the Linux Foundation uh, called the Open Source Security Foundation, focused on pulling together the domain experts in security, uh, uh, helping spawn uh, working groups focused on uh, the standards that are used for vulnerabilities and for scanning, uh, trying to get a picture of you know, scorecards for the different software packages that perform audits on themselves that have security practices, building upon, uh, in so many ways, the work over the last 20 years at the Linux Foundation of trying to harden the underlying software that, again, we all take for granted, uh, but now really focusing on better tools, better processes, better methodologies, and working with uh, other open source communities to, to, to what I, rather than saying raise the bar, I like to think of it as raising the floor of the state of open source software. Uh, so today, we're proud to announce that we've uh, pulled together a, a first-year set of commitments for, of $10 million uh, to, uh, for this next stage in the evolution of the OpenSSF. Uh, and, uh, and coming together are a set of partners who are very familiar to all of you. I'd wager most of you either work for them or certainly build upon their infrastructures and tools. Uh, and it couldn't represent a better cross-section of the cloud community uh, and the cloud-native community because we know that the cloud native community consumes so much open source software, uh, uh, but also almost every piece of open source flows through the cloud native uh, community at some point on its way to the end user. And we've already seen efforts uh, that have been really spawned by this community, such as SIGSTORE and SALSA, uh, and, and, and the kind of priorities that have been placed upon this by uh, the TAG security and the CUBE rele uh, SIG release that have really helped emphasize for this community the seriousness with which you take it. We're going to carry that seriousness forward to the rest of the software, open source software ecosystem, and frankly, the rest of the software ecosystem, given how 90% of the code out there underneath the covers is actually open source code. So we're really excited to be working with all of you on this. We will apply these funds in, in many different ways, not just to write better code, better tools, better processes, but also to build a network of the security teams uh, and domain experts in this field to, again, raise this floor in how this code is being done. Uh, and with that, I just uh, hope all of you uh, can track us down, but more importantly, come to the OpenSSF.org website, join a working group, join a project. Uh, we'd love to see you there and, and can't wait to work with all of you on this going forward. Thanks. Woohoo! Thank you, Brian. Good stuff. Sounds like collaboration and cooperation winning to me. You know, as we're all enjoying the magic of KubeCon Cloud NativeCon, one person is sorely missed. And that person is the late Dan Khan. Dan breathed life into Team Cloud Native, and he created a foundation that was a unique organization having global impact around the world. Dan, all the while, was a relentless pursuer of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because of his efforts, we have been able to award 1,518 scholarships to KubeCon. That's 1,518 human beings impacted by his work. So today, I would like to announce that we are renaming the KubeCon Scholarship to the Dan Kahn Scholarship Fund in honor of the man who was reimagining the composition of us way before the world got on. We miss you, Dan. So folks, today, as you engage in this conference, today and until Friday, bring your best self, pay it forward, and do what's right for this whole ecosystem. That means wearing your mask at all times, following the traffic light of the wristbands. Green means people are comfortable for you to come closer. Yellow, somewhere in the middle. And red, please maintain at least six feet of distance. We must do what is necessary to make all of us happy and safe in this environment. And if you're in, online, bring your best self. Create a safe environment for everybody in Slack chats, in Zoom rooms, all of that. It's essential to our success here. I have really enjoyed being here on a real stage talking to you all today. And I'm excited that we're going to continue that in Valencia in Europe 22. And also going to be in North America in Detroit, week of October 25th next year. Totally different town, totally different vibe, but we'll paint it cloud native. Woohoo! Yeah! KubeCon continues.
With all that said, folks, if you're going to remember only one thing from this conversation, let it be that we are resilient. We are strong. And the power of us is just beginning to unfold. Thank you very much.